What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to talk about how to start a business in this digital age. And one of the things that I wanna talk about is many people get into starting a business looking at the product first. I feel that is the wrong way to look at this. And as we go into this video, I'm going to explain why that's the wrong way to look at this. And one of the things that I want you to be aware of is there are so many opportunities to make money in this digital economy. There are so many things that you can put up. There are so many things that you can do. There are so many business models that you become a part of that will literally blow your mind. And one of the things that I want to talk about is finding your audience first and why this is really important. When you find your audience first, this opens up a completely new paradigm because here's the thing. Now, once again, you got to have some ideal, some ideal because you should like, I want to sell cosmetics, right? So your audience would be mostly women. And what you want to do is find out what the women are really interested in and looking at. There's a company by the name of Glossier and Emily Weiss is the founder of Glossier. And Emily Weiss had a blog that still exists where she actually wrote articles, got a ton of content, got a ton of impressions, got a lot of feedback on what women wanted with makeup. And she had ran this blog for not one, not two, not three, but four years before she opened up her makeup company. And at this point, she had so much data, she had so much interest that when Glossier started to create products, they instantly sold out, instantly sold out over and over. They experienced this because Glossier actually knew who their audience was. They knew what their audience wanted and they provide their audience those key ingredients. Because one of the things now, many of you may be perplexed about this because when I say go out and find your audience and also have some ideal of what you want to sell, because it's not as complex as it sounds, because let's say you want to sell Iron Man mask. Who would your audience be? Your audience would be, believe it or not, people from 17 to 25. So when I say find your audience first, and this is really important, when you find your audience, when you can define your audience, when you know what your audience is doing, one of the things that you will start to see is where your audience hangs out. And this is really important. Does your audience hang out on Facebook? Does your audience hang out on YouTube? Does your audience hang out on TikTok? Does your audience hang out on Instagram? Because once you really start to get into due diligence and research of who your audience is, not an architectural design on how to market to your audience, because if you don't know who your audience is, if you have no clue to who these people are, if you have no clue to what's going down, you have no clue to the ramifications of these people who are in your audience or they're in the audience, but you don't know who they are because you haven't studied them. This is going to make marketing to them extremely hard because one of the things that I do, and I will explain some of the stuff that I do. Typically, when I launch a product, I've learned over time and effort, it is not impossible, but it can be difficult to sell a bunch of different products because you may have an audience that's interested in one of your products, but they're not interested in your other product. So this can create a gap. So what you have to do, and there's a way that you can sell multiple products, and I'll be talking about that in upcoming videos. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit the bell notification, and be sure to watch these videos two or three times. Because when we get into how to sell multiple things, there's a sequence, there's layers, there's things that you have to do in order to correctly sequence that audience. So one of the things that I want you to really think about is, I want you to think of the audience from an imaginary standpoint, not the audience, but your product. You know what you wanna sell, 
but before you go out and buy it, before you invest in the website, before you even build your company, you want to do a lot of research on that audience. Because I'm about to tell you something. Right now, there's a YouTube channel that does Pokemon YouTube videos, right? And I know Pokemon videos, what about that? So this YouTube channel makes $20,000 a month because they know who their audience is, they market to their audience, and they have layered sequences. So once you know your audience, and this channel's not that big, and this is another thing, once again, if you've been around, you know that I reset my channels and I have pissed off a lot of people. I got a comment, a, a very strange comment this morning. I'm not going to share it with you. The person pretty much said that I went over to the crazy side because you've been doing all these changes. And at that moment, I did a little smile because he was one of the people that I wanted to disappear. Let me go ahead and be really straight up about this. Once again, I, I must take responsibility. I put out the content. I am the architect of the content. So I intentionally created content that created an audience that would not buy my products. Let me say this again. I intentionally, because I don't know if I was smoking crack or something, I don't know what I was doing, but I intentionally created an audience that wasn't going to buy my products, that was interested in wild, crazy, over the top topics. And these folks were not the kind of people that would buy my products. So for a long time, I knew that I had a problem on this YouTube channel, right? Oh, so one of the things I did is I completely revamped the YouTube channel. And once again, this pissed off a lot of people. I've literally done live streams where I had people's like, hey, I want you to do this content, I want you to do this content. And it's all the stuff that, once again, doesn't bring me the audience that I want to sell my products to. And this is a really good lesson for you because if you're gonna do content to develop your audience, once again, there'll be a video about doing content to develop your audience, you must be really key on your content and you can't be switching it up. So one of the things that I have learned is, and listen to me, and I know this is gonna sound, but if you have the right audience, and it can be a small audience, let's say you have a YouTube channel and you've got 5,000 subscribers, but they're 5,000 of your ideal subscribers. That channel could make $300,000 a year. Now you could go out and have an peripheral audience you can put out crazy stuff. You can put over the top stuff. You can put that type of stuff out and you're going to find it really hard for you to sell it. Once again, there's many topics, dating, relationships. Once again, there's a lot of topics that get a lot of views, but because they get a lot of views and these topics are spicy, over the top. They create a situation where you're getting an audience, you're building a tribe, but you're building a tribe that you cannot sell anything to. And I can tell you from personal experience, one of my biggest years on YouTube, my first really large year was 2012. I had 4,000 subscribers. So there was other things going on. There was a lot of other things going on. So it wasn't just my YouTube audience. I had a lot of internet traffic. I had a blog. I had a lot of stuff going on. But once again, once you start to build your content and once you start to develop an audience, you want to be 100% keyed in to that audience. You don't want to be going over here. You don't want to be over here doing this crazy stuff. And it's really interesting how when you focus, when you really focus, you get not maybe the biggest audience, but you get an audience that you can actually sell products and services to. Because one of the things that deeply depressed me was I had the YouTube channel, I was getting views, I was growing, but my sales were going down. And that's one of the things that perplexed me. That's one of the things that I reset and pulled everything back. And I got really key on focusing on making sure my content was congruent, that my content was on point, and my content was developing an audience. Once again, much smaller. This is a smaller audience, but these are the people who are interested in the type of stuff that I want to sell. And this is really key because here on the internet, right now, shorts, 
YouTube is pushing shorts like crazy. You could pull up a short and YouTube is designed their system to push out the shorts. You can literally start a channel today and create a short and get two, three, four, five, six thousand, four, depending on what niche that you create your shorts in instantly. And here's the thing, short content viewers typically do not invest in products. I want you to think about this. You put up a 30 second video, you put up a 60 second video, you put up a minute and a half video. Now, once you get to a minute and a half, once you get to two minutes, you're entering commercial territory. And once you get to about three minutes, I do believe that you can use those type of videos to sell things, but a 30 second video, a 60, I actually saw a guy who was talking about teaching people how to do short form content to go ahead and create all of these new sales and I think the grift was and the, once again I said grift was we're going to teach you how to do 30 second videos and make an additional thirty thousand dollars per month now I'm about to share some with you I used to do long form content once again long form content is not going to get you a lot of views but I used to do this back in the day and I'm gonna start doing this as we go forward and I had a product in a video that only got maybe 800, 900 views. And I had a $2,500 product that one video got me 20 people to subscribe. So $50,000 off a video that got 800, 900 views. So once again, and this is one of the reasons that you want to target, one of the reasons you want to subscribe, because we're going to be talking about targeting people, creating offers and stuff like that and you want to hit the bell notification button so you can be aware of when I drop these videos. But one of the things that you consistently see with people who want to make money in this digital age is a vast lack of research. Number one, you have to know who your intended customer is. Your intended, you, you gotta know because if you don't know, it's gonna be very hard to market to that customer because you don't know who they are. It's gonna be really hard for you to create content. It's gonna be really hard for you to create whatever you need to create to get that customer from a person on the sidelines who's just kinda of looking at your content like that and get them from that to I'm gonna buy that. And this is called nutrient. But it all starts on your research. Everything starts, begins, ends with your research. I'll tell you a project that I was doing and it was really interesting because I was running ads, right? And I was running a bunch of short ads and I really didn't get a lot of traction with the short ads. I really did. Then one day I just noticed that I start writing these incredibly long ads, five, six, sometimes 10, paragraphs right very long and then i started to get the most astute and detailed responses see here's the thing and this is one of the things you got to understand you want people who are buying into your message if they're not buying into your message they're not going to buy your product and this is one of the things that i discovered with these long form ads was no i wasn't getting a lot of views but i was getting way more customers and this is the thing that you have to understand and this is one of the things that you have to put into your mind because it's the internet and as a youtuber as a person yes i enjoy getting a lot of views what are you here for are you here for views or are you here for money and the same thing that can get you a lot of views will not get you a lot of money and the things that will get you a lot of money may not get you a lot of views because one of the things that you have to understand is as we go forward, as we build out this system, as we build out our ideals, that once we get to being very patient, once do we get to being very diligent, once we get to being on point, this is how we make money. Because I can tell you, and you may not want to even believe this, but there's a lot of small YouTube channels and when I say small, seven to 30,000 subscribers, that are making four to $50,000 a month. But these YouTube channels are very keyed in to their primary audience. 
And when you get keyed in and when you serve and deliver your primary audience the correct information, the correct templates, you can make a tremendous amount of money. I had a smaller YouTube channel that was very niche and it was making about between AdSense and course sales, about $17,000 per month. And I only had 7,000 subscribers. So one of the things that you have to do is really get into the research, get into doing the deep dives and knowing who your audience is and talking to your audience. One of the things that I have gotten away from on my public outcry is I'm not doing male content strategies and I'm gonna to explain to you why. As the creator of the content, you've got to be happy with the content, but you gotta be happy with the audience. And what I am seeing is a lot of men have defaulted to, I'm just going to watch all these channels that mock women, that make fun of women versus trying to solve my problems. So what I am seeing and time will tell, cause I may put out a channel, I don't know, but I'm not really a fan of that audience. I'm not a fan of that putting out that type of content. So what has happened is I've developed a different kind of attitude because here's another thing, and this is a really big thing. If you're gonna do content, and once again, there will be a content video coming up. If you're gonna do content, you need to enjoy the audience as well as the content. Because if you don't enjoy the audience and you're just making this content, it's going to get really Let's see, it's going to because you're, you're going to get disconnected. I should say you're going to get disconnected from your audience. You're going to get disconnected from the content because and one of the things is, especially if you're doing YouTubers, the average lifespan of a YouTuber is 3.5 years to seven years on a long span. I've been a YouTuber for 15 years, so I've doubled that. And one of the things that you have to understand is as you put your content out, you got to enjoy your audience. But this comes back to research. This comes back to you doing the things that you need to do to make your content resonate with your intended audience. And if your content doesn't resonate with your intended audience, you're going to have a serious problem trying to promote products, trying to sell stuff. It's just going to be really a big problem. Once again, I know this is the Internet. I know that you want to get a lot of views. I know you want your channel, your source, your blog, whatever you're doing. You want it to grow really fast. I understand that. But the things that can make your blog grow really fast can be the same things that can turn off the flow of money. Speaking of money, what I want you to do is to go ahead and get the money mindset course. This is a course that's going to teach you how to build business credit. This is a course that's going to teach you how to optimize your money. And it's not a long course. You could probably get through it in about at the moment. There's three hours of training there. There'll be a little bit more. So this is something you can do in the evening. Get these principles down so you can optimize your money so you can manage your money so you can be in a position. Because once again, once you start making more money, if your current money is optimized and you're managing it well and you're handling things, then when more money comes in, you can optimize it and you can do more and better things. So the course's link is in the description. If I don't forget, because sometimes I forget, it'll be in the first comment and you can just go ahead and get that and get into the money onset course. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm here today. I'll be probably be here tomorrow. I'll probably be here 10 years from now and I'll see you guys in the next video.